INEC devolves collection of PVCs up to 8,809 electoral wards as deadline draws near. And Global Change report indicates that political thuggery escalating in Kano, Ekiti and other states ahead of the election. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cole. As part of measures to ensure the seamless collection of permanent voters' cards by registered voters, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has devolved the collection of the cards to the ward level. Before now, the PVCs were only available for collection at the Commission's 774 local government offices across the Federation. Now, this came after INEC raised fresh fears that the general elections would face uh, serious threats of cancellation and postponement if security challenges across parts of the country failed to improve. However, the ward level exercise would only last between January 6 and 15 uh, in the year 2023, after which the exercise reverts to INEC local government offices. Well, joining us to discuss tonight is Choma Ezenwafo. She is the head of news at Cool Wazobia Info Port Hackett. And Shegun Shopita is of Act Network and he's also a political analyst. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen and lady, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Um, Shagun, I'll start with you because you're civil society. Um, a, a lot of complaints have come as the time for um, the collection of PVCs is gr drawing to a close, even though INEC had come up with you know, novel, a novel idea, which is to devolve these, um, the collection of PVCs to ward levels, to making it easier for people to get you know, uh, their PVCs. Um, but a lot more people are saying that they might be disenfranchised because of some of the hiccups that uh, they may have um, um, you know, encountered while they're going to back and forth INEC offices to get their PVCs. A lot of people would say they have seen their names on the register, but their PVCs are still not ready. And the days are running very, very short. I'm sure that you, of course, have heard a lot of these complaints. And what do you think can be done before January 2022? Uh, I beg your pardon. Well, um, I think the situation now is, um, is quite... Um, if the reports that we hear from, from people, from just from like anecdotal reports, um, that you get from, from people's experiences is anything to go by, um, then I think there is some cause for concern. There's some cause to be worried uh, with regards to um, the success of the collection exercise. You know, and when we say success, you know, so uh, according to INEC, I think we had uh, roughly, if I'm not mistaken, about nine, 10 million new registrations. Mm -hmm. I think it was 12. And then by the time they did the cleanup, they cleaned up about two million out of that. You know, so uh, for us to say that the PVC collection has been successful, you know, one would expect that at least um, um, 60, 70 percent of those people turn out to collect their PVC. So of course, if the, if the percentage can be higher than that, then the better. Uh, the experience that people are reporting, um, that the reports that we're getting from people's experiences across the country um, has been a mixed bag. In the earlier periods of the collection exercise, it looked as if people were not aware. So turnout was very low. You know, so you would go there and uh, you know, you just basically walk in and pick up your PVC. But then as time went along and you know, Nigerians being the last minute people that we are, um, there's been a rush. And more importantly, besides the rushes, there's quite a lot of confusion, and INEC really needs to address this. There's quite a lot of confusion with regards to the exact location of people's PVCs. You know, so during the registration exercise, uh, registration happened in a, a variety of locations. Some people got registered at the INEC local government office at some point. Some people got registered at their polling unit at some point. Some people got registered with INEC actually going to communities to create um, registration centers. 
Now, the challenge is that having registered and having selected the polling unit you would like to exercise your vote, knowing where your card is now appears to be quite a bit of a challenge. You know, and we've seen experiences and reports from different people who have gone severally. I had somebody on, I think it was on um, one of one, a radio station uh, this morning, somebody narrating how he had spent 10,000 naira on transportation going between Abeokuta and somewhere around Ota and um, even, you know, um, Abuli Eba side of Lagos. 10,000 naira in one day trying to locate his PVC and ended up still not locating it that day. In fact, I have a personal experience. My children, who I compelled, <laughs> I compelled to go get registered, you know, when the registration was going on, um, they basically went around and uh, had to go to about five different locations before they eventually found one of their PVCs. The first one, my son's PVC, he found it very easily um, based on the number on his sleep. But my daughter couldn't find hers, and they, they had to go around about five different places, you know, before they eventually located it. And this experience appears to be um, um, similar for a lot of people. So INEC needs to help address the issue of how people can easily locate where their PVCs are so that they can collect them. Otherwise, some people will simply, you know, they'll simply balk, they'll walk away, and, you know, they'll get disenfranchised. So this is really a clear on call to INEC to help out. Uh, Chama, let me come to you. Um, INEC has already re um, released the final voter register, and I'm sure that you've seen this. And you know that um, Lagos um, is not necessarily left out of this. Lagos, uh, in fact, the Northeast um, has, the, I think, um, two... Okay, well, the Northwest... 22 million. Yes, 22 million. I was looking at the numbers. Um, because I see that we have more people um, in the, the North, you know, who have got collected their PVCs. Um, most people would say that those PVCs, the reason why that register is the way it is, is because uh, there were lots of hiccups. Just like she uh, Shagun has said, many people said they registered... They've not seen their names on the register, or maybe they had double registration. Uh, some people said, well, I transferred, I got an email, but then when I look at the register, I still do not see my name at the place where I registered, um, or ra rather that I transferred to. And there are people who, don't even, who have PVCs and do not know where they're going to vote. So again, it, it shows that, yes, we have new entrants into you know, the voting system, but um, the things that we're hearing, does it one way or the other confirm the fears that people had at the beginning of this process of the fact that people may be very disenfranchised at the end of the day? Because it's not about how many people are on the register, but how many people will be able to vote on that day. Mm, absolutely, actually, Miriam. We have a situation that we do in Bagging for. Uh, I would say INEC prepared as much as they could, but I'm sorry to say it appears it wasn't enough. Compared to, we're, having, we're going to have a lot of first-time voters. I've been saying it since the beginning of the exercise. We're going to have uh, all of the number of people that's been recorded that came out to vote. I mean, I think in North East, they have about 1 million extra people added. And for each of the various zones as well, at least a million people were added to the register. All of those people came out, not because they were coerced, but because they were willing and ready to actually be part of the process this time around. And so it was obvious that it wasn't going to just be about registering. They were also going to follow through to ensure that they get their pieces. And sadly, it's, um, it's, uh, it appears I didn't bargain for that level of commitment of Nigerians to pick up cards, these cards, and follow through the way it's happening now. The truth is, having covered elections in the past years, this is the first time we've seen Nigerians commit to a process to the very end. Unfortunately, the last minute culture that we have as Nigerians is still there. But the fact that we have a good majority of people, I'm yet to meet anyone who registered for this exercise that is not committed to ensuring that they get their cards. That, um, that change in behavior I need them back in for that. And so you find it in the number of staff that deployed to be uh, part of this PVC collection exercise. You also find it in the planning. When you go to the PVC collection centers, you still find that 
it's not um it's not properly structured okay and uh it's not um so there's no speed and there isn't like a target of the number of people you're committed to ensure get their cards in a day which is what you usually find in senior climbs there will be like a target of you know based on the number of staff and all that's available we are going to target to keep this number of people their cards daily we don't have any of such going on everything is just I mean, the, I think the devolution definitely really helped. It helped, but it also created an issue. And uh, because what we're looking at uh, the staff strength of INEC. Mm. And so when you, say, when you say one person or two people should go to each word, uh, the, uh, is that number enough mm. to serve the battalion of people that are going to gather at those words? But, who are eager to get, get their cards. But Anik would tell you that one of the reasons why they did this devolution is so that it could reduce the number of people who are, you know, waiting at the local government headquarters to get these PVCs. Mm -hmm. But then on the uh, on the day that they started this, I think that was Friday last week, uh, INEC was also decrying the number of people who showed up in the first place, that the, they were expecting more people to show up, even though it would not be a large crowd, but they expected that at least half of the number of people who are on the register for those wards and registration centers would show up, but then uh, they came in trickles. So it also goes to, you know, um, wonder if we really are serious about the, you know, because th there's that, Thing that's going around that oh this is the year that you know nigerians are going to show um their voting power and their might but yes. can we really rely on that because yes we hear about the tsunamis on social media but now that we're asking people to come get their pvcs and um, for you who's actually always in the field what's the body language of the people right now especially at a time like this I, I would say anger. The, the, the language is anger, that of anger. So many people are frustrated. And like I said, there's so much energy being put towards PVC collection because there is so much sensitization done uh, by both the civil society and government themselves. And so what, what we're, I'm predicting that uh, a lot of PVC collection centers are going to have um, a crowd, angry crowds on the final day, which is January 22nd. We're going to have a lot of people who just be there who show their frustration in some way and i've actually also advised based on that prediction that they have some sort of security uh you know backup of some sort around those centers on the final day of pvc collection because like you said the system didn't quite prepare for the number of people you know just trying to respond to what you said earlier the truth is that the, the, the experiences differ in different states in river states it's been a very serious exercise here. The, the wards get filled up and, and, and crowded. We've had, um, we've had to monitor this at different, different wards, and each of those wards are usually very crowded, and a lot of people showing up and not going anywhere until they get their cards. And really, the level of commitment we've seen, it's unprecedented, really, I must say. Mm. So one thing I'm predicting for sure is as, I think by 15th, they will go back to the local government offices and the crowds are not about to reduce. And if the INEC do not come up with other plans to you know, further ensure that people see that they are making effort to ensure that there are no PVC cards stacked in the offices on election day, they are going to get a lot of people really angry, frustrated, and if you do not have security agencies getting in there, we may have a different story being told altogether. I mean, stories of people harassing the INEC staff would come in, and stories of people cutting away cards, just you know, things like that. And these are things that I, 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 at this point is actually a no brainer because uh, when you look at, like you said, the body language, body language is that of frustration. Uh, and the frustration came out of the enthusiasm of willingness to vote. And now where the system is showing that we didn't exactly prepare for all of the number of people that have come out to be a part of this, it's quickly turning into frustration. Mm. I can't remember the last time we spoke to someone who is at a collection center who, the, who wasn't really angry that the system is not um, allowing for a free process and, and uh, for them to be able to get their cards. They say it's quite slow. They keep wishing it can be better. They keep wishing it can be faster so that more people can get involved. Okay. Uh, let me come back to you, Shegun. Um, the, the, uh, the first day that the um, 
the devolution of these voters' cards, um, PVC's uh, pickup mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. I was. Oh, okay. Choma, so sorry. I, we, we lost that connection with you for a bit. But I'm going to Shagun. Shagun, the first day I, I went to, I went to somewhere here in Victoria Island. And the reaction I got from the people there was almost the same thing as Choma was talking about. A lot of people showed up. The process was slow. Um, the hands were few. They thought it was going to be easy peasy. Um, but, but just a few people endured. I, I saw many people leave. In fact, a gentleman I interviewed told me that his wife, if his wife was here, he would only just look at, you know, the crowd and how the process is slow and go home and say, you know what, well done. So it goes to my question. You are, we've been doing a lot of civic engagements and people like you, Act Network, um, Enough is Enough, Yaga Africa, encouraging people to go and pick their PVCs, giving them reasons why they should go and vote. Do you think that we've done enough, including the media, in this sensitization, if there are people, especially people who are on the same level with you and I, uh, because the gentleman I spoke to seemed to be well-educated or of a certain class. Um, and if people on that level are saying, I could not be bothered, I, I can't go through this stress, then what should we be really expecting? And does that mean that we're not, we've not done a job, you know, our jobs as we should? Well, um, um, you know, so, so if, with that, in, with regards to that, um, I'm not expecting anything different from the pattern that we've seen in the past. Uh, what you find is voter turnout, voter apathy is generally higher the higher you go up the economic ladder. You know, so the, the more affluent communities tend to be the places where turnout tends to be the lowest. Um, so you go to places like BGC, you know, um, Park U.S. State in the Kogi, you know, and all of that. Maybe Magodo in um, in Ikeja, speaking about Lagos, and you find that the turnout generally tends to be much lower than um, the less affluent communities. Um, and even when they come out, after they come out in comfort, they put out chairs and canopies. They do barbecues during the, on election day, um, make themselves very comfortable, you know. So if you if you if you want to put them through a process, such people through a process that will stress them or take their time, which is more valuable to them than say, for example, somebody who is a vulcanizer, with all due respect to the vulcanizer, who is also a human being. Um, they don't have the time to spend on a queue the whole day trying to pick up their PVC, so they will walk away. Um, so there's a lot more work to be done by INEC um, and maybe by civil society, maybe by the media, uh, to try and most critically help people understand how to go about this, help people understand how to identify the location of their PVCs. Because I think this is the real challenge. If it's just a question of going to the center and waiting three or four hours, and then you are sure you get your PVC, I'm sure most people will don't mind. But the problem is you get to the center, sometimes you have waited on a queue for quite a bit of a while, only to find that they're telling you to go somewhere else. This is the problem. So INEC needs to, I want to suggest very strongly, if not for this round of uh, collections, maybe for future elections, INEC must leverage technology. You know, this, this idea of um, trial and error, people going to three or four centers before you can locate your PVC is ridiculous because mm -hmm. INEC knows where those PVCs are. Before they release them from the local government or from the state INEC office to the local government, to the world, there's a register that you will fill that will, that will have the serial numbers of the cards that are released to specific locations. So you need to automate that process. It needs to be on a database somewhere, even if it's just an Excel sheet that people can query. So you can just go online, key in your, 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 your registration number, whatever number that INEC gave to you when you did your capture, your, your data capture. And then it pops up the location of your card, and you just go there. There's some effort in that regard. You, there's some SMS, um, USSD numbers that you can send messages to. There's some phone numbers that are flying around. But I find that those things are not really working. You know, so we, I want to encourage INEC to really, really turn to technology as we go along with this process. I think it's too late for this round of collections. 
So I think that what just needs to happen is that we need to continue to speak, continue to sensitize people, and continue to encourage them to, to hang in there, to stick in with the process, go through the inconveniences, mm. suffer the pain just for the now, pick up your PVC so you can exercise your franchise. But then, going forward, um, INEC has to do better. Do you think that INEC is taking on a bit more than it can handle, being that, um, I mean, because you're talking about technology, INEC keeps, um, kudos to INEC, they try every other time to come up with new ideas, um, and now we, we have the Beavers, which is also an upgrade of sorts. Um, but yeah. look, with, with all of the things that you and Choma have said tonight, does it seem a, a tad bit that INEC might be, you know, chewing more than, or taking on more than it can handle? Absolutely. And, you know, this point you make, Miriam, is very important. Um, we, everybody needs to recognize the enormity of the task that INEC is, um, is um, entrusted with. You know, it's a massive logistic operation. I mean, just think about this. Nine million, nine million cars need to be distributed across the entire country. Imagine how big this country is, and then you are sending nine million cars, you know, far and wide, different locations and all that. It's not easy, and we appreciate this. INEC needs to um, help themselves by leaning more on available resources. Uh, you know, it, the, the time must come when INEC will be able to look at this logistics and farm it out, outsource it to logistic experts. Why do people have to leave their houses to go pick up PVCs? INEC is a federal government agency. Whatever the logistic cost will be per head, there has to be a way. For example, but how, know, but how many a, Nigerians will be willing to pay the cost? Because I neck again. No, I mean, no, I mean, it should, the, the cost shouldn't be borne by Nigerians. It should be borne by Nigeria. You know, and that's the point. So, how much would it cost, for example? Would it cost five hundred naira per head, for example, to send these PVCs via uh, some sort of dispatch rider system to people? I'm just saying, for the future, we need to think about a system that will make this more convenient for people. We're a lot of people in this country. How, how, how realistic yeah. is that? We're lots of people in this country. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's for us to think about and look at mm. the challenges in, in that and see how we can, you know, iron out those challenges and make it... Look, what I'm saying is that if INEC does not make this convenient for people, then you will continue to suffer apathy. 96 million people registered out of 200 million, out of maybe about 150 million eligible voters is not good enough. You know, mm. and it's an indictment on INEC. INEC needs to make this process easier so that Nigerians will be more encouraged. You know, it's two sides of the coin. Of course, we need to speak to Nigerians themselves and get them more, you know, committed and more, you know, um, determined to, 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 to exercise their franchise. But INEC needs to help make this easy. That's what they're doing everywhere in the world. You make it easy for citizens and they will exercise their franchise. Mm. Choma, do you agree? Uh, Miriam. Yeah, I, I was about to ask if you agree with his position, but go ahead. Yeah, just uh, just uh, uh, some issues I wanted to just clarify. We have 9.5 million people ready to registered voters, but the truth is that um, the number of PVCs not get collected are not up to that. We have a good number of those PVCs that the 9.5 million registered voters. We have a good number of those numbers in the hands of Nigerians, and that's a good thing. Okay, so for each time we're having these conversations, to so remember that we're trying to pick lessons from it mm -hmm. and see what we can do going forward is where, where I also want to look at. So what is it that we must do now? Because I think about in, in the next 10 days, we just have 10 days. The INEC actually now have 10, just 10 days mm -hmm. to ensure that the rest of those cards, which I am, the last time we changed, I think it was, uh, wasn't up to two million uncollected cards. Right. It wasn't up to two million uncollected cards, and that's that's a good thing that has happened uh, compared to where we are coming from. We are coming from. There are so many factors that that, that contribute to voter apathy. And before now, it was just that people had this distrust and were interested in what was going on. But now the system is going to contribute to that voter apathy, and that's one thing that we need to focus on. So if INEC has to perhaps create another agency within an agency that will be responsible to ensuring that people get registered, and then, and then we've said this before, actually, where there shouldn't be a separate time for continuous return registration and a separate time for PVC collection. Let it just be a continuous thing. Like where you can walk into a bank yeah. and uh, get your ATM when it expires, 
you know, a system that allows it. And that way, there will never be a time we'll have crowds, just people picking up their PVCs and being a part of the election. Mm. I was in the United States during the, the last election. And uh, one of the things I saw I, was that um, it's, it's part of the process. It's embedded in the people's way of life that you can, why going, maybe getting back from work, you can stop over and vote. You can, the process has been embedded into the everyday life of the Americans. And so Nigerians can, INEC is specifically now, could uh, begin to look at an, an, a situation where people can be, you can meet people where they are. Okay, and uh, there isn't a separate time for continuous registration and a separate time for pickup. Everything should be happening at the same time. And then it kind of helps. I mean, we're 200 million people. Mm. Okay, and I think Americans are like about 300 million. So there's so much you can be learning from how these things are done. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's something that we can learn how others have fixed this thing and just pick up those lessons. And it's possible. It can work. We can have as many as, as, as are willing to be a part of the election, be a part of this election. But it starts with the commitment to accepting where we got it wrong, where we got it right, and uh, restricting our steps and ensuring that uh, we get it right the next time. I mean, the next election should, there has to be something to learn. And it should start with the process of registering people and people getting their cards and people being able to locate, like he was saying, Sashenko was saying, that a lot of people still do not know. We got a lot of yeah. such calls, yeah. people asking us, please, where should I go pick up my PVC? Mm. And so we have to keep sharing the INEC collection uh, center yeah. list mm. for people to be able to figure that out. We need to fix that in the future. And, and to add to it, we need to do all of those things in record time and not wait for the last minute yes. of what we're doing now. Dying minutes. Fin yes. Finally, Shagun, um, I want to take you on again on the so-called middle class, which is gradually fading out anyway. I don't know if we still have a middle class in Nigeria. but We don't, actually. <laughs> but these people who we look, we categorize, because, you know, you, Shegun, you tried to make a case that, oh, you know, they like their comfort. But these are the people who the supposed, in quotes, vulcanizers would be looking up to. And if these are the people who do not necessarily show up, I mean, these are the guys who are very good orators on social media, who have these conversations at dinner tables, here and there, and they're very, you know, um, they, they, they're emotional about these things. But then when it comes down to elections, they're not voting. Is it that the system doesn't affect them or they care less? Because I'm trying to understand, if we do not understand the problem, we cannot get the solution. If these people are one way or the other, staying away from the process that is supposed to change the narrative of Nigeria, and these people mostly are the ones that can. I mean, where does that leave us as a country if it's just anyone who's, I mean, the, the, the average poor person is the one who shows up to vote, but the man who seems a bit comfortable doesn't think it's important. I mean, I, I was talking to a colleague of mine and I asked if he had a PVC and he said no, and that he doesn't care, but this is a journalist. So again, these are the issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there are quite a lot of people um, in our middle class, whether they exist or not, you know, they're still there. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people in that category of uh, Nigerians who simply don't care. And if you ask me why, uh, Miriam, to be honest, I can't answer that question. I think it's a, it's a gamut of um, social issues that has led us to this point. I think that the average Nigerian middle class person is um, concerned about um, uh, more economic issues, um, some at the existential well, level. For I some, mean, everything is everything is also part of the election. The economy will be sure, adjusted sure, one way or the other sure. if the elections Absolutely. turn out great. Absolutely. But, you know, the thing is, the, the nexus, the connection, the, making an emotional connection between the outcomes of elections and our current situation can be a bit challenging for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, for them, they're simply going about their life. They want to make sure that they can pay their children's school fees. They want to pay the next rent. You know, they're, they're concerned about these basic economic issues. And, you know, for, for a lot of them, it's just a case of, look, I couldn't be bothered. You know, let me just face this my life and make it work, mm. you know. So we need to get to a point where people can see how the, the connection is a direct connection. Mm. The outcome of the election next week 
is going to determine my income level before the end of this year, based on the policies that the winner will roll out. You know, but somehow, I think that connection is still a bit missing for the middle class. So you see how much of a problem we have. Because uh, if the middle class can't make this connection, then how can the guy who is living day by day, hand to mouth, make the connection? You know, and it's so ironic because they are the ones that trip out to vote because of vote yeah. buying and the other factors, you know, yeah. and all that. So it's a terrible situation we find ourselves in. Yeah. And we can only just continue to appeal to people to show more interest in these things. Well, time is also on our side. So we have to go. We have to go. Yeah. We have to go. We don't have time anymore. Uh, okay. Chama Zenwafo mm -hmm. is the head of news. Cool okay. was over info Port Hackett. Uh, that's 92.3. And Shegun Shopita is of ACT Network and is also a public affairs analyst. There's so much to talk about, but then we have another Thursday. We'll come back and have this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the escalation of political thuggery in Nigeria as election season draws near. Stay with us.